Welcome to This Day Live, the Sunday talk show, where we discuss political matters and bring you to the top stories uh, locally, nationally, and from around the world. I'm Ruben Abati, and This Day Live begins now. I'm Ruben Abati, your host for This Day Live, the Sunday talk show. I'd like to welcome our special guest for today. Joining me today is Dotun Oluwo Poroku, who is a partner at a tech company called Stata. And also, Yemi Adamoleku from Enough is Enough. And last but certainly not the least, Olawale Olale, a deputy editor at This Day on Sunday. Nice to have you uh, on the program. Good evening. Good and Wale, good to see you again. Uh, we have quite a bit to talk about today, but before we get started, let's take a look at the top stories of the week. Uh, Wale, you want to lead us through this, or I do it? Uh, I know that in Enugu, residents are in complete shock as twin explosions rocked the state when residents went out to cast their votes in the recent local government election. According to Enugu's Commissioner of Police, Three suspects have been arrested and inv investigations are underway. However, in good news, not even one life was lost, although the explosion happened among an enclave of artisans, including welders, mechanics, and electricians. Caretaker Committee Chairman of the Enugu South Local Government Area described the blast as unfortunate, but he applauded the police for their prompt response, assuring that it will not affect the polls as our people are very enthusiastic to vote, he said. Nigerian militant group Niger Delta Avengers, the NDA, claims to have ended their ceasefire and will resume attacks in the oil-rich South. The group made the decision stating that they had lost faith in local leaders, threatening to make every oil installation in the region feel the wrath of the militant group. They were further quoted saying that the campaign will be brutish, brutal, and bloody, with the aim of putting off the fires that burn to flare gas in our communities and cut every pipe that moves crudely away from our region. These fires of the group date back to 2016, following talks with the government. And following the force, attacks on oil facilities in the Niger Delta area in that, in that year slashed oil production in Nigeria to its lowest level in at least 30 years. Ahead of the National Caucus meeting of the All Progressives Congress, APC, President Mohamed Buhari met with some chieftains of the party this past Monday. Among those in the closed door meeting with the president was the party's national leader, Ashwaju Bola Tinubu. This was shortly after the meeting with the president of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum and Zamfara State Governor, Abdul Aziz Yari, and the national chairman of the party, John Odige Oyegun. This was Senator Tinubu's first visit to the villa since Buhari returned from his medical trip on August 19. Senator Dino Melaya is in the news again. This time, he was attacked during the Kabadi celebration by hoodlums who pelted him with stones and other dangerous objects. It all started when the masters of the ceremony called on the senator to present his speech and make a donation before the arrival of the governor to the venue. Following the speech and subsequent donation of 3 million naira cash, while Senator Melaye was stepping out of the podium and walking towards his car, he was attacked. Bugis State Governor Yahya Bello, who was already at Kaba for the occasion, refused to show up at the venue following a security report of the incident. Former Benue State Governor Gabriel Suswam has again been detained, this time over his involvement in an alleged 23 billion naira fraud involving the former Petroleum Minister Alison Madweke. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission added that he is also facing other charges for alleged corruption. He has been taken in for interrogation, which the Benue State chapter of the People's Democratic Party uh, talked about receiving about 40, 450 million as part of his own share of the uh, election uh, booty, as it was called. Sources in the commission said the former governor was detained in order to determine all that he knows about the 450 million naira 
that he allegedly collected from a bank and what was done with the money. It was like one of those competitions where you have spectators watching with bated breath, waiting for which of the competitors will come out tops. For the better part of 10 minutes, members of President Muhammad Buhari's government were wrapped with attention as they reportedly watched the head of service of the Federation slug it out with chief of staff to the president. The president at the chambers of the presidential villa at the time were the Senate president, Speaker House of Reps, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, just to name a few. From reports, the confrontation between Winifred Oyoita and Abba Kiari was as a result of a letter written by the head of service, Oyoita, indicting the president over Mina's reinstatement. The head of service, Oyoita, had in the letter not only pointed accusing fingers at the president for being in the know, but also warned the president of a backlash from the public. This happened just before the swearing in of the new secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, and the launch of the 2018 Armed Forces emblem. Incidentally, the first assignment the secretary to the government of the Federation performed was that of calming freed nerves, especially that of Uyo Ita. It's time now for a short break here on This Day Live, the Sunday talk show. But do stay tuned. When we return, we'll take a look at the issues in greater detail. Welcome back to This Day Live, the Sunday talk show here on Arise News. I'm Ruben Abati. Now, um, Wale, I tried to assist you earlier on. I mean, you usually do the uh, rundown, but I tried to draw attention to some of the issues. But, you know, in a few uh, uh, seconds or minutes, uh, would you like to fill in the gaps? Because I, I didn't cover all the issues. I mean, there are some well, issues that yes, I may I, have left I mean, out. I thought you had um, considerably covered uh, sufficient grounds. Uh, but um, the week in question is one week I would describe as um, uh, politically instructive because of some of the things we saw, mm -hmm. you know, especially within the ranks of the APC, the ruling party. And then if you permit me, I would say perhaps the journey towards 2019 has begun in earnest oh, yeah. from what we saw, you know, during the week. Um, the president has tried as much as possible to close ranks with his members. He, I mean, it's clear to him that there's trouble in the party. So what was done for the whole of the week was to see how much of amendments they could do as uh, they begin to journey, you know, ahead of 2019. And of course, one of the things he said, which he thought could uh, come uh, Fred Nams was that he would expand his cabinet and then he would bring in, um, yeah, make some other new appointments. And that, I would think that uh, that's against his uh, promise initially to run a very slim and efficient administration. Doing that, and uh, when you see leadership panning to political uh, pressures like this, um, I would think uh, integrity is also eroded in a way. Um, uh, uh, former Governor of Lagos State, Ashwa Ju, uh, lost a son in the week. And, yeah, um, our condolences. Yes, uh, our condolences from this um, stable. Very uh, sad. Yeah, very sad one, yes. Um, INEC has promised to run an electric, electronic resort transmission with Anambra. I'd like to see how that will come up, you know, efficiently. It's a pilot, though. No, no, yeah. I, no I, if I worry so that uh, it could be modeled up, you know. It's not going to be the basis for the results announcement. Yeah. They just want to test the system. Yeah, then former NSA Dasuki was uh, appeared in court. He, <laughs> he claimed or feigned. To, to have suffered um, selective amnesia and then couldn't say much in court. Maybe if we get there, uh, former Vice President uh, Alex. Well, was it selective amnesia that he alleged? He said that he couldn't make any yeah, statements yeah, if he did not have access interpretative to his record. Yes. Reporting, interpretative yeah. reporting. So don't use the headline. <laughs> Look at exactly what the gentleman said. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, former Vice President uh, Alex Ekweme uh, was in command in the week and had been uh, flown abroad. And uh, it was, yeah, it was curious to, yeah, yeah, to read that I mean, uh, the government tried to score Why? some cheap how, points How could they even think that you <laughs> score their points? So you fly in, and, and we, we wish um, Mr. Ekweme a speedy recovery, but you fly a former vice president out of the country for medical care. That warrants a, I don't know, six-point press release. But in the process, you say nothing about the health sector that makes it necessary for you to fly him out of the country. Well, that's not the job of a spokesman. 
Uh, a press statement <laughs> is not a critique of uh, no, conditions no, no, in no, just, no, no, it's not a criticism. No, 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 I'm not saying criticism. If you had said we're flying him out, and I've also requested a meeting with the Minister of Health to review the current state of... So we'll can, what, I mean, it's only to the fact that you are aware that that shows that... Yeah, maybe when we get there, let me just finish this Maybe when we get there. Then the, the, the um, IG, uh, police IG, has agreed to appear before the Senate after a lot of pressure. Um, on the international scene, uh, Morocco has applied to join ECOWAS. I'd like to see how that is feasible. Um, in Kenya, Kenyatta won the lecture eventually in spite of the crisis. Uh, <laughs> apparently. Liberia's uh, run of suspended for following a breakout of crisis. Lebanese Prime Minister resigned. Trump on 11-day visit to Asia. And uh, Paul Manafort, Trump's campaign DG to face charges in connection to Russia's uh, meddling in the, in the presidential election. So okay. basically... We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at some of the issues, a few of them, uh, in the course of this program. But the main topic we're really going to look at today is uh, social media and uh, democracy, and whether the social media is really helping our democracy, uh, because mm -hmm. now we're in the era, as it, uh, as it is said, uh, of uh, fake, fake news. news. But let's look at uh, this particular issue. President Mohamed Buhari has finally sacked the suspended secretary to the government of the Federation, Baba Chilawa, and the Director General of the Nas National Intelligence Agency, Ambassador Ayo, okay? The sacking of the two government officials was based on the report of a three-man panel led by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo that investigated them. Meanwhile, the President of Nigeria has appointed a new secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa. Now, some people are saying this is too little, too late, that it took the President such a long time yes. to make up his mind, and that he probably would not have taken this action if we didn't have main agate, yeah. you know, um, what do you think? Uh, Dotun, uh, this is your first time on the program. Maybe yes. I should let you go first. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I have this perspective from someone who is, who is not living in Nigeria, by the way. So I know you, you, you backed me up. The government is more complicated than we can see from the outside. And there are many actions that the government, that we think government should take, like maybe sack, you know, that will roll roll out to a lot of other actions that we could not even see now. So a lot of us can criticize and say, why couldn't they do this X, Y, and Z? Um, you just mentioned something about the fact that the government is trying to, the president is trying to expand his governance, uh, his, his government, his, uh, his officials. And I think that is a pragmatic move. It might be a little bit um, um, not sincere of him to do that because he has said it, he said it's going to run a lean government. So I think sacking of these three people too late now um, it, it, there are many other things that, that are behind that I don't know, but maybe many of you might know. But I, it's very easy for me to say, why didn't they do this before now? Yeah, I, I don't like the idea of saying because we are outside, there are certain things we are not privy to. And so I, I, I don't like the sound of it. Because but it's a fair point, for me, but in this context... For, for me, I want to believe at, at, at this point that there's nothing really esoteric about this administration or governance generally. So we cannot begin or always hide behind that facade. That said, the president came back on the 19th of August. The report was submitted to him on the 23, uh, 23rd, which is uh, three or four days after, and it's taking him two months and eight days to... We don't even know what is there. Is it classified? If it's classified, why ask them to go in the first place? Or Are ask you prosecuting them? Is you there, know, there, so we have no clue whatsoever. It, 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 it doesn't show sincerity in the, in the... I agree. I mean, in fairness, I agree with this point, because government is... Yes, can be more complicated than we see from the outside. But in the context of this particular government, and you say you have zero tolerance for corruption, you ask for... You suspend them, ask for an investigation, you get the report, and then it takes you two and a half... Basically, all it tells us, it takes us... It's taking you two and a half months and so whatever... Months and 18, days, days. ...to read the report and decide on a course of action. Given the gravity mm. of, of the offence... The, the offense, of the alleged and of the, Exactly, of the alleged yeah, offence. And the nature of the people involved. This is the secretary to the government of, of the, the federation. federation. Yes. It's not a sort of low-level official. And then DG and IA. Exactly. So, and the, the cash were found. I mean, so I think that's part of it, especially within also the context of an administration that over two years hasn't really taken any decisive action. And then so when, you come when, in when saying suddenly, it's corrupt, corrupt, yeah, corrupt, yeah, I mean, corrupt, when suddenly corrupt. do we have EFCC acting on its own discretion? 
he now said, oh, they can go after them. Like, he was not keen. He really does not want to prosecute anybody. I mean, yeah. it's not fair. Yeah. I think it's in that context. So maybe if in, in, in the two years that we've had, we've seen a series of actions that show decisiveness, that making decisions, then mm -hmm. maybe you cut them a bit of slack and say, maybe this particular case Good, yes. had some yeah, then we can begin to make excuses. that we're not sure. By, by the way, yeah. so I'm, so I'm coming from the angle that most of the time, someone like me, mm -hmm. I'm very eager to criticize someone in government. Very, very mm -hmm. eager. They give you plenty. Yeah, they have, you, you, I mean, they give you, plenty you should have this issue but anyways. <laughs> if, if, if at the end of the day, he's, sack, he's sacking those guys. Mm -hmm. Although we don't even have a culture of government sacking their own in Nigeria mm -hmm. anyway. This we don't even have one. a culture this of people. This particular one. Yeah. No, we don't even have a culture actually, of people generally. actually resigning because they've been caught. Yes, that you can we say. Why shouldn't all of this be taken in the context of the three main points agenda of the administration. Exactly. Security, security corruption, to ensure economy. security, to fight corruption, and to strengthen the, the economy. Uh, national economy. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some people who say, look, on the question of corruption, there doesn't seem to be enough determination, enough commitment. Yeah. What do you think of this? Yes, I agree. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the point. The, 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 the facts are evidence, though. You can't, you can't say, you can't say any more because uh, I don't even know where to start from. They yeah, make allegations. They make allegations about your, your those in government. You you say if they have any more proof, they should bring. When they bring, you don't oh, want to yeah. say. You just you fact, government is the first to come out to defend them and then give them clean bill. And then so why how are we fighting corruption except for haunting the opposition? I, I haven't seen the new commitment actually to either team or stamp it out. As far as this government is concerned, for me it's a no. A good summary right there. Anyway, let's look at another subject, this alleged northernization of, of, the, the, of the country. Uh, it comes up often and again, you know, about people uh, when they are in power, um, using their position to take care of people either from their ethnic area or from their religious group or from their neighborhood. But in response to this, the presidency has released the full list mm -hmm. of all the appointees of the president or, and of the administration. The release was in response to a recent media report that 81 of the 100 appointments made by President Buhari were from the north, while other regions shared the remaining 19 appointments. Earlier, Buhari's media assistant and spokesperson, Femi Adishino, stated the claims made were either an ignorant effort or a mischievous attempt to mislead the public and portray the Buhari administration in bad lights. You must have seen the uh, statement by uh, Femi Adishino, yeah. backed up with uh, a full yeah, list, yeah. indicating that, in fact, Ogun State has the, uh, 21, uh, 21. the highest it number is, of yeah, federal appointees, country, yes. and that it is not followed, true. Even followed by Imo. And that it is not okay, true mistaken, that the, the president they, has been uh, Pasha. The list they issued was, even, was more than, as a starting point, the list they, in response, their list was more than 100 appointments. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. So I think. 150 or whatever. Exactly. But so it, in terms of summary, they claim that 81%, you know, uh, are no, no, from other no, parts no, of Nigeria. That the report in and of itself is not, it's, it's false and it's leading, but the, re, the reporting <coughs> is accurate because they said 81 out of 100. Yeah. So they chose, I mean, you can, it's like saying, so they, didn't, they, they, they didn't took out like 50. Exactly. So they didn't put like 50. Okay. I get where you're coming exactly. from. Now, okay. So it's like saying 81, they could have said 81 out of 85, and, not, and they would still have been right. Mm -hmm. But in an effort to make a point that was false. Mm. So, so I read a piece this morning uh, from Chude Jidenwa yeah. about the fact that most Nigerian government, or, or Nigerian is run by rumor, it's, it's run by rumor. There's a perception that we have about ourselves. That, uh, when news comes out, people will read meanings to it. It's almost like um, we, we have um, a kind of pre preconceived notion about people. So when a, Northern, when a Western or uh, Southern president is there, we assume that's just going to appoint people no, from no, his no, But the newspaper article was actually very clear. It said 81 out of 100 were not. So they, there's no need to read. They were. So they, 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 they took out 80 80 that were southern. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the, the proportion was wrong. So we're saying 81 out of 100. Right? But it's actually it's 81 point. out of 150. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's which, a deliberate. So the paper was actually. That's so the point. No, so no, it, it, so it, no it's not wrong. accurate because from this the new analysis by government, it is actually something, something that goes yes. to the well, yeah, instead of Instead of dealing with the details. Yes. I guess that somebody is still going to sit down and do a forensic analysis. Mm -hmm. Oh, certainly. It will find and out come up with certain yes. conclusions. Yeah. But you know, the Constitution recognizes 
the federal, federal character. character. Yes. And that principle is that, look, appointments should be... Even. ...should reflect the federal character of Nigeria. Even the appointment of federal ministers. Yes. And that's why we seem to have a bloated sure. uh, federal cabinet. But doesn't all of this speak to something? The fact that Nigerians don't trust one another. Yes. Oh, sure. And that we're still divided by ethnicity, no, sure. by the religion, by suspicion. Yes. Yes. And that we do not trust that our leaders will appoint people on the basis of merit or ability. And in some cases, it is, it's, it's true suspicion. Because most, we've seen that happen when somebody is in a position of power, will appoint somebody who does not have the merit to do, to do that appointment, but because we're from the same hometown. We see that happen. But in a bloated way like this, mm -hmm. people can misinterpret it and bring out news that a lot of Nigerians will believe. So if, it is, if Nigerians can believe that story, because we can see a snippet of truth in it, mm -hmm. but someone else, someone else can use it as a way to, to cause more harm than necessary. I also think there's something we've done over time that is unfair to the North. We like to group the north as a block, and when it comes to the south, we break it down: south, west, south, east, south, south. Yeah. That, 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 I think that also was responsible for how this northern vote was seen, yeah. because they just say the north, yeah. and now when it comes to say southwest has this, southeast has this, and then south south has this. But to your point, we've I forgotten. Think... Okay. No, go ahead. Yeah, we've forgotten that there is north central, north west, and I mean, north east. Before you have any response, let, let me throw something else into it. Okay. You know also that. Governance is significantly about perception. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Very in much. terms of appointments, mm. people talk about the weight okay. of position yes, exactly. and That's the influence. Well, I don't there. want to use the word just. <laughs> okay. That's a Nigerian name. <laughs> but you see, if, for example, the security sector, okay. everybody there is from the north. Yeah. If the economy, you know, everybody there from is the from, top. people are likely Which to perceive strategic. But, but by the that way, you are. Very giving strategy. some I guess. important yeah. positions. Just be silly appointments. So. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But the humans, we are tribal by nature. So whether we are from ethnic tribalism, tribal? we are tribal by nature, humans. I, I prefer the word. Yeah, what I'm saying, what, the reason why, yeah, because yeah. even in England, right, when somebody becomes a prime minister, he's going to appoint his close friends, people that went to Oxford together with in the, in the front cabinet. Well, they don't have this kind of ethnic division that we have. So Scottish prime minister, uh, a, a prime minister from Scotland yeah. might not necessarily appoint people from Scotland, but will appoint people that he, he goes with, that are his friends. Old in. boys network. Yes. So that's the Classic. same thing. Yeah, and, and people accuse each other of that as well. Yeah. That the front cabinet, the front road, the front benches are from Eton's or they're I Oxford mean, people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have you, you, humans, you, we're like you that. Appoint people, no, but you also appoint people that you know and you can trust. And you so yes. they did it through a network. So I need a position. I, I know Mr. Batia, I'll say, please, yes. I'm looking for this. And he said, oh, why don't you? This person will be good. Rather than. No, no, in our case, the point is, is there nobody he trusts from the South? But he has shown you that he trusts a lot more people from Ogun than he does from Kano. <laughs> is that okay? Which is an What's that? As well. Let's break down, like you said. Let's break down those appointments. Okay. Let's break down those appointments. Ordinary members of board. Before we end this, what I was really trying to make about the 8100 was also the role of media. Because the paper that wrote the story, I think, in, I would say, would almost be deliberately mischievous. Because the yes, way it, it was, was framed yes, it was, it was. was meant to pass it a was. particular type of message. And I think that was very unfair. On the and he achieved that. No, it's, yeah. it's and part of the that. function of the media that. to generate debate. Debate but was okay. And in this particular case, it, 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 it must be constructive. No, yeah. The paper you're talking I, I, about I is business. That was. Yeah. Yeah, they've thrown so up something news, for then. interrogation. No, but no literally, literally, that's what it is, fake news. Okay, <laughs> literally, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> you are watching This Day Live, the Sunday talk show, here on the Arise News with me, Ruben Abati, in Lagos. We're going to take a short break now. Do stay with us.